Yes, yeah, so we're here <laughs> again, on April the 17th, Friday, demonstration Friday. two. Yeah, so I'm uh, not going to be at this one because I'm with my kids today, but it is a huge demonstration that I was sent information from yesterday. A group has organized um, what's called Operation Gridlock, which was started in America. I believe the first one was Ohio. Yeah. And it's a car protest where cars surround something and block off all the traffic. And I've never been in one. I've never seen one. So, so today, the 17th, somebody organized out of Ontario, I think, Operation Gridlock. Uh, as far as I understand, it's going to be 14 cities across Canada, all the legislative capitals, so like Victoria and then other cities like Vancouver, where it, they're big cities, but they're not the legislative capital. So Charlottetown, Toronto, Ottawa, 14 cities starting at two o'clock. And it is a car um, traffic blocking protest. And I've never seen one of these. So I was curious to know how big it's gonna be. In Ohio, um, Germany, India, I mean, seven, seven or eight countries and provinces and states now are going into no more lockdowns or Operation Gridlock protests. It's happening all over the world. And I wanted to witness the one in Vancouver. So I made some well, you're, signs. You're leading it, Susan. You're leading in Vancouver. Thank you. <laughs> I guess so. So this one in particular I made for Kennedy Stewart. I was involved oh, in yes. this campaign to get him elected. And this is a really important issue because the city of Vancouver is about to go bankrupt and they will yeah. be faced with possibly not being able to play, pay police officers, um, fire guys, ambulance, whatever, right? All of the parking meters are free. The buses are free. Nobody's paying property taxes. So there's no incoming revenue for the city of Vancouver, which is terrifying. It seems deliberate too. Like why can't they charge for the buses? They could do that. I think because they're offering such a compromised service. I don't know. I don't yeah. know. It's it's all who knows, right? It's all so weird. So anyway, I wanted I gotta come back and give this to Kennedy. <laughs> um, it's to show solidarity for him because municipal governments and mayors like him, you know, they've been completely completely thrown into chaos because of what these emergency orders are doing. So it's it's the provincial uh, government is basically hijacking the rights and the democracy of the municipal government in Canada, all over in all of our provinces. So it's going to start at two o'clock. I don't know how many people are going to come, but I'm sure your video will show more. Yeah, and how many hits did we have last Sunday on Twitter? Oh, I think it's 3.2 million so far. Wow. Yeah, and I did contact um, two or three media outlets. Well, seven journalists contacted me in three different countries to try and give them the story of what we're doing, and not everybody wants to say the right you know the fair two-sided story it's really about independent journalists like yourself well you know in this morning my 26 minute video was released the, the short version the more punchy version you can see uh, that okay okay great yeah this this story is really being told by citizen journalists like say like me just with my phone or like you and Dan Dix got 3.2 million hits yeah. thanks to Dan Dix yeah and mainstream media is not coming to the table they're not presenting both sides of the story which yep. is heartbreaking and I think that's why people are leaving you know the audiences are leaving mainstream media because we just can't get reliable information there yeah so it's a big day we'll see what happens I'm sure tonight it's all going to be on the news 14 cities there could be thousands of cars causing chaos and hopefully it's going to wake a lot of people up to get out there start opening their businesses get the schools open again yeah. stop this <laughs> the destruction of people's lives and on Monday our health minister Adrian Dix you know what he was saying about us on global news right what? Well, I was saying we're a conspiracy. We're just doing this for our own self-glorification. You know, we're just doing this to get attention, he's saying. And we're conspiracy theorists. Like, he's really putting us down. Well, I have experience with Adrian Dix. He has signed Order 376, which is an injurious secret regulation that threatens to put me in jail for six months and fine me $250,000. Yeah, it's called Order and Council 376. Is it about this? About this? No, Adrian Dix, Lana Popham, and um, Janet Austin, who is Lieutenant Governor, signed what's called an Order and Council. Yeah. It's a gross violation of human rights, and it is basically threatening every parent in British Columbia to hand over our private health records to the Gosh. government, which they have no business having. Yeah. And I've been told, I've gone to my um, MLA, uh, my MLA David Ebby, yeah. two or three times to his office, and they're not planning to enforce it. But the question has to be asked, why did Janet Austin and Adrian Dix and Lana Popham sign an order that threatens parents with jail time and fines in the first place? What's their motivation to do this? Why do they want our private health records? So yeah. I, Adrian Dix, you know, you look, I look at him on the news, <laughs> this this is not somebody that should be in charge yeah, of the Yeah, he's hypocritical. 
He's saying we're profiting from the suffering of others, you know, those who are staying at home. Or we're, he said we're flouting the social distancing rules. Well, that wasn't our intention. We weren't thinking about that. We were just making a demonstration. Well, and you have to look at other things he's done, which is um, he has opened the liquor store hours for five more hours a day. Yeah. So you can buy booze from 7 a.m. to 11 p.m. Which is destructive, you know. Al alcohol is the leading cause of cancer. He should know that because Fraser Health just initiated a massive public campaign about that. So he is openly <coughs> creating policies that allow the government to profit off, or, off alcohol and cancer. So again, this isn't somebody that should be in charge of the Ministry of Health. Yeah. That's, that's what I feel anyway. And he, they didn't even get a majority when they were elected. So hopefully we won't see them in government again. Yeah, we, we need better leaders in health ministries because it's at the moment it's all about big investments into corporate managed medicine, not natural health, not free freedom of speech, yeah. not options, not choices. And I've been on his Facebook page and I don't know whether he's a nice guy or whatever, but there's no vegetables, there's no exercise. It's all about huge investments into um, for-profit, you know, corporate medical um, care in BC, and really? that's not health. Do you want to comment on Dr. Uh, Bonnie Henry, or, or health minister, or well, health doctor? Well, I just found out she got a grant in February for $540,000 through the pharmaceutical faculty at ah. BC, and that's where I live. And she is a researcher, and so that grant um, was given to her th by, through the, by the federal government through the faculty of pharmaceuticals. So to me, again, gross conflict of interest that someone like Bonnie Henry receives huge amounts of money from ph pharmaceutical companies and holds the office of the public health officer. Wow. I don't understand how that can remotely be legal. So that's why I do what I do to advocate education so citizens can dig in and start finding answers to these questions themselves. Yeah, and she was speaking out against us on television news just four days ago, about, particularly about our demonstration, what we were doing, echoing the same thing as Adrian Dix. Well, they're hypocritical, in, you know. We're in the in the era of tyranny by government, yeah. you know. These governments aren't interested in allowing us to speak and participate. They really just want to force us into situations where we have no control. And it's really, really obvious right now. People didn't really realize this was going on, the average person. But as soon as I received that threat, uh, forcing me to hand over private information, I knew right away, about a year and a half ago, that this was a bad policy from a secret government that yeah. I would not trust. Yeah, it seems like a leftist government. Yeah, I think it's like a totalitarian tiptoe. We could be witnessing it now. This, well, this is a big deal. Well, it's the removal of choice, yeah. right? It's secrecy. It's us versus them. That's really the way it is. People have been in politics for a long time, and someone like Adrian Dix has. I don't know much about him, but he was involved with whatever happened with the Fast Ferries and Glenn Clark. Some of these people have been around for a long yeah. time. Um, and most people are disengaged. They don't trust governments anymore. They're like, oh, whatever, I don't... They don't want to know, you know, the, the NDB got into power and started putting in these huge taxes that yeah. angered a lot of people. Um, what do you think of the global situation? The coronavirus is locking down the entire world. Like this is bigger than British Columbia. Do you want to comment on the whole global situation? Well, the good, the good thing about it is the blowback is becoming huge as well. And I don't think that these corporations, these governments and organizations like the WHO is going to be able to do this again because everybody is waking up. Every time yeah. a law or regulation goes into place supposedly to protect someone, it violates someone else on the other side. That's what law does. So. I'm just trying to be grateful that this is happening now, like for my children's sake, they're experiencing this now, seeing what governments are willing to do to violate rights and freedoms. This this is what's happening in the world now. Yeah. But there's more of us <laughs> than them. There's seven yeah. billion of us. And these movements always change the world. They always hold people accountable. Yeah. So we have just as much a chance of doing that. Want to comment on Bill Gates? He's in the news a lot and a lot of people are turning against him. He practically runs the World Health Organization. Yeah, well, he was also, you know, the antitrust lawsuit, the American government nailed him with Microsoft. Again, I look at the track record of these people, like, why would we trust them? I yeah. know that Bill Isn't Gates... he a doctor now? He seems to be the world's doctor, the most important physician, don't you think? Well, I've been involved with tech people for a few years, ah. and they're all very controlling. It's all about controlling large numbers of people for profit. Yeah. And I view, you know, I know that Bill Gates has done some good things, and maybe he has some good intentions, but... I view what he's doing, I see what he's doing, it's actually the new form of slavery. If he wants to implant things in people to be able to track 
to me, that's slavery. That's what they used to do with slaves. They used to brand them to be able to track them, surveillance them, and profit from them. So I see what he's doing as a new form of slavery. And a lot of thinkers think that, people who are writing on tech, the control of tech and things like that. There's a, you know, a few books coming out now like that. So I think that's where <coughs> he's trying to go with this, is, is massive control of large numbers of people. And that is so wrong and so yeah. bad. And he's worked directly with David Rockefeller. Do you have a theory of how high this goes, like the Rockefellers or the Rothschilds? I don't know. I don't know anything about that. I'm sure. I don't know how willing I am to know how big and bad it is. I really just <laughs> yeah. try and stay on top of what affects me and my, my family or my friends. Good. And any time something comes in to kind of violate my right, I try and protect that. But I've lived in Africa for a long time, and I've seen such gross human rights violations. I know that a lot of people in the world live under that. Never thought that I would see it like this in Canada. Well, I appreciate your initiative. Susan Stample Spooner, you stood up for yourself, you stood up for your family, and now you're getting the whole city to stand up. And you Absolutely. initiated this. Way yeah. to go. And, and let's do it in a respectful, positive way. Yep. This is Vancouver. We've done a ton of things to change the world and fight for justice. We can do it again now. There's more of us, at 5 million British Columbians, there's more of us that want no more lockdowns. That's what most people want. We want this to end, so let's work together and get, it, get the economy open quickly. Thank you, Susan okay. Stanfield Spooner, right on. Thank you, Brian, it's a pleasure. <laughs>